Hey there, Internet. So today I'm going to be talking with you guys about the GoPro Fusion. I'm going to give you 10 tips on how to use it. But first, I'm going to let you know this is a 360 live video. I'm recording it with the Yi camera. I'm going to include a link in the description below this video to all the different products I'm talking about today, including the Yi camera. So if you're interested in how I did this, know that you can find the link there and it's going straight to my Amazon influencer page. So I have 10 tips for you and they're all about the GoPro Fusion. So I'm going to start out now. First tip, upload using a dual card reader. Dual card reader meaning you have two. If you already have two USBs, then you can just connect two regular in there. But the whole idea is this is going to speed up your process for uploading quite a lot. You're going to be able to do it twice as fast than doing one card at a time. And I highly recommend that you do it this way versus uploading directly from the camera because it will take you infinitely longer to upload from the camera. And time is money. Um, throughout this video, I'm going to tell you a lot of tips on how to keep the money in your wallet. It's this way you, you get to save your money and you don't have to spend a lot on uh, you know things that you don't need. So that was tip number one. Never upload using the camera, only upload using a dual one. This one I, I happen to have, my uh, brother got me for Christmas, and you can see it's just easy to connect in, and you have both cards now go into the laptop. The other recommendation I have is using your micro SD card. GoPro has recommendations on their website for micro USB, and I disagree with their micro USB cards because they're more expensive. This card by Samsung, it's called a Samsung Evo, it's 64 gigabyte, you can get 128 gigabyte, um, it's UHS-3, and it's a heck of a lot cheaper. So I highly recommend using these. I've been shooting with the camera daily for about like two, two and a half months, and I've never had any card writing errors at all. So these are good. I uh, highly recommend them, um, but GoPro does not recommend them, so take that with a grain of salt. Um, the next one I would recommend is get yourself a pen. The reason you're going to need a pen is because when you are getting your cards in and out of the camera, as I'll show you here, you open it up and they're very hard to get to. My finger, I can often not get them. So I use a pen. I'll give you a little demonstration here. You have your card, you put it in there. And you can't even, I can't even like push it in with my finger because I got really chubby fingers. So I just use a pen. It makes it nice and easy. Well, here it's a little bit trickier because I'm at a weird angle. But you get the idea. You get the idea. Pen is going to be your number one most useful tool for getting those cards out. You can use any type of pen. Any type of pen. Um, you can even use a key. If you didn't bring a pen to set and you're like, oh crap, how am I going to get the camera, the cards out of the camera? You can use your, your car keys and that also works. Um, the other big thing I would recommend that people do is to remove the housing on the side of the camera so that way you can charge your battery a lot easier. And you can see over here I'm actually charging uh, my camera and it's just going right to it and I don't have this piece that's folding out. That being said, if you want to film underwater or outside in rain, you're going to want to hold on to that because it will keep it insulated, protect it from rain and uh, and weather that is wet, um, snow for instance. But then again, I shot with this outside in the snow with that door open and it was fine. So once again, take that one with a grain of salt as well. Um, but it will make it easier for charging the camera and also probably help with heat dispersion a little bit. All right, next big one, write your name on the case. You can see here I put my name, put my phone number. That way if I ever leave the camera somewhere, people will say, oh, this is somebody else's. And if somebody takes your camera, they're going to go around the whole day and people will say, hey, that's not yours. That's not yours. Um, so that is my, my fifth tip is write your name on the case. I would say this across the board for any camera. You can see this one is starting to come off, so i got to rewrite it. You can also use sticky labels. Sticky labels are great. Um, for my sixth one, I highly recommend not only putting it on the case, Putting it on the actual body of the camera, in case the case, you know, in case the camera falls, gets lost somewhere in the ocean, people will be able to find it. And you might say, Kevin, I don't have a label maker. I can't do this. Here's a cheap little tip that will save you some money. 
you can buy address labels online through Amazon and you just take the address label and you can cut out your, just your name portion and and there you go and that's a very cheap way to do it I think that'll cost you ten dollars and you get a hundred of them so if you have a hundred different pieces of gear you can put it all over your, your gear you can see everything I own has uh, my name on it um, the next thing I recommend is I, I actually recommend that if you're going to be using it a lot you should buy two of them the reason I recommend this you can see here I got one I got two I recommend this because the camera currently doesn't come with a battery charger so I can't be on set and be like alright go charge this at the battery charger the only way to charge it is through the camera so that's kind of an Achilles heel of the camera but that being said I imagine they're going to come out with a battery charger sometime soon but for the time being there's no way to do that so I need two batteries and the only way I can keep them constantly cycling is by shooting with one charging with the other. So you see here, this one's in charge mode, this one I'm ready to shoot with. Um, so, you know, once again, it might cost you a little bit, but I recommend it if you're using it for daily videos. Um, oh crap, I hope that didn't stop the stream, I just got a phone call from somebody. Um, the next thing I would recommend is to um, leave the case on when you're recording. And the main reason I recommend this is let's say it gets knocked over or something, then you're at least going to protect it. And it's really easy to leave the case on there as well. You just zip it off, there it is, perfectly fine. So I highly recommend you guys do that. Um, you know, it's a good way to keep it safe. This is how I travel with it all the time. I'll rehearse the scene with actors, and then at the exact moment when we're going to start recording, I will finally unzip it and start recording. I also recommend that you put lens cloths in there for extra padding and also in case you're on set and you notice a smudge you got a nice little lens cloth ready to go there so that is my um, eighth suggestion for you my ninth suggestion leave the case on if you're charging it as you see here there's no reason for the case not to be on there you kinda have to angle it a certain way to keep it on but I highly recommend this in case someone knocks it over it falls off your desk because of an earthquake something you're in the safe there. Alright, final recommendation, number 10. When you are going to convert, when you're, it's time to transfer your footage over, what I recommend is for each of your cards, you put them, each card has its own folder, front and back camera, front and back lens. You have each of those folders, you drag each one into a single folder. From that single folder, you can then drag that into the Fusion Studio software and begin stitching it. You don't want to be dragging each shot out and doing that. Just drag it all into one folder, make it nice and easy, and call it your raw footage for the day, or raw footage.